Intro music. <laughs> A star for the ages for Tony Gwynn, number 3,000. They have acquired Eric Johnson and Fernando Tatis Jr. from the White Sox in exchange for James Shield. <laughs> My name is James. My name is Joey. And this is the Brothers Padre. James, this is th- the second episode we recorded this week. Normally, we re- this is the first episode we record. And this week, we'll record lots of emergency episodes, I feel like. Hopefully. Yes. Uh, welcome, everybody. This is the Brothers Padre, as we mentioned before. And this is it's one of the more fun, chaotic weeks. If you're on a team that's competing, it's the trade deadline week. So everyone's kind of like speculating on who's going to get. You're refreshing Twitter like crazy. You get anxiety about going to the store because you worry you're going to miss a trade. And the Sanio Padres are, are, uh, have one of the most active GMs when it comes to these kind of seasons. And so we're... In, and we're uh, What's the word we can say, Jay? What, what would you say we are? Pins and needles. Pins and needles. It has been a fun one already. We, we had a episode earlier about Adam Frazier, how we acquired him from the Pittsburgh Pirates. And there's lots more. Um, We don't have any more... uh, Lots more probably going to happen, rather. Um, We don't have any... There's no uh, trades that happen yet, obviously, and we will... We'll record them and react to them when they arrive. And, uh, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some of that, because with trades, it kind of points to weaknesses. Like, people trade to make their team better. Right, James? Exactly. Would you say that's correct? Well, that should be what happens. Yes. Correct. Either you make your team better. There's two types of trades. Yeah. Make your team better for right now. Right. Or make your team better for later. A lot of teams in competitive situations like the Potters are, we trade to make our team better, and we give teams, players, to make the teams better for later. Yes. And... uh and kind of when you, as fans, we look at the roster, and if you if you listen to us, we've we've complained about some uh, some holes in our in our roster. So I think the first part of this episode, we're going to talk about that and kind of the chatter around what people are saying. And I, now I think we've talked about trade before, trade rumors before, but now actual like real reporting on people are actually interested. Powders are actually interested in X, Y, or Z player. So there actually are some legs to some of these stuff. So uh, I think we're going to talk about three players and kind of maybe four. Uh, maybe any of you have any more. And we'll talk about kind of what what kind of holes can we shore up from there. And I think I'm going to start with the big one first. And that is, uh, I mean, as we're recording this, we're watching a Chris Paddock game where he scuffled a little bit. He Chris Paddle, Chris Paddock scuffle. <laughs> it should be a song. <laughs> Do the Paddock scuffle. He uh, he has a tendency to blow it out, just completely blow up his starts, and just unobtainably we can't we can't go back recover from it, right? He has traditionally every start one bad inning where he just forgets how to pitch. Last outing he had against the Braves, he did not yeah. have this outing, yeah. and it was a very much needed breath of fresh air. But this inning. He uh, gave up three runs, but I think the Padres should go after pitching. Yeah, so it doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean we'll trade away Paddock. I doubt anyone wants Paddock, but I do think we need pitching to help that out. Whether Paddock goes to the bullpen or he's not, I don't know. I don't know where Paddock ends up if we get an extra arm. Probably goes to the bullpen. Probably. Right. right. I mean. I- Long-time listeners will know that you literally called, said, this is Chris Paddock's last star as a Padre, and then all of our stars were hurt. And then he started, he has yet to miss, he's yet to miss a start since he said that. Yes. <laughs> and it was after you and I went to the baseball game and he gave up 15 runs. <laughs> he didn't give up 15 runs. He gave up nine runs. <laughs> I stand corrected. In three innings. <laughs> if he would have stayed in, he would have given up 20. <laughs> It was one of the harder games I've ever seen, and I, I I have yet to see him turn it around to the point where I think he can actually compete. You don't want this guy in the during the playoffs. If he starts a playoff game, 
yeah, you're just gonna be you're gonna be clenching so hard. Everything your teeth yeah. are gonna hurt, and everything else is gonna hurt too. Yep. I I am so. I'm over Paddock. I'm just I I think. He has great stuff, but he just does not know how to use it. If the goal of this Padres team is to go and win the World Series, then we can't have Chris Paddock playing in the capacity where he takes on meaningful innings, right? Would you agree with that? Correct, yes. So we need to trade for someone. There's a few names that popped up that Padres attributed to. Right now, the big one, of course, is Max Scherzer. He's a big one. Um, he has expressed that he wants to play on the West Coast, and he's willing to uh, waive his no-trade clause to be played on the West Coast. Does that mean the Padres trade for him? I don't know. What do you think? I, I would love Scherzer. Yeah. I course. would honestly love Scherzer. We've talked about him a lot this season. We have. I would actually... Despite us dominating him, yeah, we smack him around pretty hard. That's probably why he wants to play for uh, us because <laughs> he's tired of us beating him. I I think I I for, for a long time did not think the Nationals were even going to trade him, but once Strasburg is out for the year, they have no chance of catching no. up. No and, way. Now, yeah, so yeah, I think I would love Scherzer. I don't know how much he's going to cost. I don't. He's a complete th- rental. He's only good for this year. Exactly. He's only so. This is the, this is the deal. We have 60 games left of the season. Yeah. One 2020 season. Yes. <laughs> left. If you hire a pitcher who's going to start every fifth game, he will at most have 12 starts. What are we going to give up for a pitcher for 12 starts for the regular season? Plus however many he starts in the um, playoffs. If we go all the way to the World Series, we're looking at 16 starts. Yeah. If we, that's what I'm thinking. It's just so tricky. Like, do I want to give it to Farm if we sign him, if we trade him, and then trade for him, and then we get an extension to his contract because he might want to stick around San Diego for two more years? That would be worth it. He's 37, maybe 40 after three years, but could be the Justin Verlander path. He gets better at that age, you know? I don't know. Justin Verlander hasn't pitched all year. Because of second Tommy John, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But he's, also, he's like 38 right now, 39. Mm-hmm. So Anyways, a, yeah. so... Well, I'm just saying that, like, that if you do extend him, that's part of the risk you have of extending him, right? He is older. You're not, you're not necessarily going to get Max Scherzer. In correct. Two years, right. And, but if you do get Max Scherzer for the next two years, it's a fantastic deal. Yep. I, I, again, I don't, I don't, I would love to get Scherzer. If we got Scherzer, I think, with uh, a line, with a pitching rotation heading to the playoffs, with Scherzer, Darvish, Snell, and Musgrove, your four man roster, four man rotation, you can't be mad at that. No. Weathers, Lamette, coming out of the bullpen every once in a while. Deadly. Yeah, exactly. Lamette out of the bullpen is a uh, cheat code. It really is. That guy is destructive when he's on. And he can throw, and he basically say, "Hey, go crazy for two innings." That's bananas. <laughs> That's just Very bananas. And that that would I would I. There were other pitchers out there. Duffy from the Royals is being thrown around, and um, um, Jose Barrios. From Jose the, Barrios is the guy I want from the Twins. The Twins are sa- so the other two actually Duffy and oh those are the ones we're associated with, um, and those are like the three that people say are. That are are going to be available. Tyler Anderson from the Pirates was traded today, but then was untraded today, so he could be available too. Um, he just for a little side note, he was traded, but something went wrong with the Phillies side of the deal, so he literally became a Pirate again because they messed up. So Poor what guy. you're saying is they really filled it up? Yep, they really filled it up. Yep, that that's the new <laughs> pun for our <laughs> new noun for this year was yeah, filling it up. Barrios is a year and a half. Duffy's and also like another year and a half, two years. So I, I don't mind that. I would also, I, Barrios is one of those guys when he's, he's kind of a little bit like Snell. It's like a right, right hand version of Snell where, so when he's on, he's basically unhittable when he's off. It's the roughest thing to watch in the world. <laughs> he's like, what are we doing? <laughs> um, yeah, I wouldn't, I, I, I think 
Scherzer gives us such an edge in the playoffs. It just would be rough to give up one or two t- of our top four prospects, I think, because just we want to compete for a long time. Correct. AJ Peller wants to compete for at least another two or three years. He's Have, building a whole team around a three-year run dynasty. Right. And listen, he, he keeps drafting incredible players. TJ Abrams and Robert Hassel are legit going to be good players, right? And he keep, he's, he's building that up, building that up. And that's, a, that's what a good team does. But it's just like, do you want someone Scherzer when it's just it take on so much money and you kind of, I don't know, it's just, it, to me, the only negative about Scherzer is just, you're not guaranteeing this, you're not, you're not guaranteeing a long, long time with him and you're also putting on a burden for like if you get Scherzer, he's owed thirty five million a year, something like that. So that's completely if it if in this week we're offered someone who's really good on the relief side, but we don't have enough money for it, I would rather go for a Duffy or Barrios plus a better relief pitcher or a better bat. Then sure, well, would, would would what do you think? Would you rather have? We haven't talked about the other things, but like if Scherzer was the if it was the barrier for us to get a better relief pitcher and or a better bat, would you just settle for like a num- a, a better number three starter? I'm not worried about the relief pitching aspect. We're getting Strom back. Lamet, if, if if in August we can have Strom and Lamet in our bullpen, yep, our bullpen's pretty set. And if Frazier adds a little bit more offense, that means our closer might not have to save every game. Our bullpen's more set. Right. I would rather have two starting pitchers, even if it's in the two number three guys. So you want two starting pitchers? I'll set up for one, but I want at least a starting pitcher that can go seven consistent innings. Yeah. Like Shohei Otani. <laughs> like Shohei Otani, yeah. Shohei Otani. How, wait, I, thought, I, I don't think he'd be expensive at all to get. No. But maybe incredibly expensive. Yeah. As uh, Shohei Otani signed an exclusive deal with Fanatics, is like they're, he only sells signed material like from him through Fanatics. He's now the number one sold athlete on that platform. And this number two person is 10 times less than that volume by volume. An athlete across the, in the world. Not just baseball athlete, just of an, every athlete in the world. I'm fanatics. He's, he's a, he, enormous, yeah. So Artie Moreno, the owner of the Angels, is like, yeah, he's a cash cow. I'm not getting rid of this guy. Exactly. No one's getting it. <laughs> I could sell $300 Otani jersey every day. That's exactly, what Mar- yeah. Artie Moreno's thinking, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think I agree with that. I'd rather get someone... I, honestly, if you could just throw six or seven innings, I don't really care if you give up five runs. <laughs> six or seven innings, three runs is my my. Yeah, limit. that's a quality. I want quality start that I. I would love Scherzer. Scherzer would be a, a statement to head in the playoffs, and if we could get Scherzer and then immediately sign him for an extension, yeah, that'd be awesome. Because AJ Pro likes to do that. He did that with Clevenger. He signed him and gave him an extension. Yeah. Then he got hurt. But let's <laughs> sign. Scherzer and give him an extension. I, I think that would be great. I don't know. But yeah, I, 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 if we don't get Scherzer, I want to. Yeah, this week is a, is a failure if we don't get a starting pitcher. I agree. Right? Like, we have to get somebody. I 100% agree. So, Scherzer, um, people have been saying, is is dependent upon whether we can take on the value of Scherzer. So this is a crazy thing. I I mentioned this in episode three or two. I can't remember. I don't remember what episode I said this. And I said that we live in a, uh, in a post money Padre society where money doesn't mean anything to Padres. And I did as a joke. It was a bit, right? I was joking, but now we're talking like, Oh, the Padres are going to blow past the luxury tax threshold, the soft cap in baseball, which is 200, $10 $10 million, I think, like that. So once you go past that, you get penalized for every million dollars you spend over that. 
Uh, the first the first time you do that, it's very cheap. Second time, it gets worse. Third time, blah, blah, blah. It gets worse. This is insane that our Padres are blowing past the luxury tax threshold. And I don't care. It's not my money. It's the team I root for. So, yeah, blow past it, right? Yeah, it's not, it's not, my, <laughs> it's not my money, but I have... Purchased this season six Padre hats. <laughs> so I have contributed to the Padres coffers. Yeah. Because if you're going to play well, I'm going to buy your yeah. stuff. Uh, so they're saying that they're willing to do that, but they're not willing to do it by $30 million. So they don't want to go. They're willing to do $220 million, but they're not willing to do $250 million. God. Cheapskates. <laughs> when I'm in that situation... It's kind of like when you're going to Chipotle, right? And you're like, guacamole or no guacamole? It's like that. In order of magnitude difference. Yes. Yeah, like, <laughs> well, no, it's like, like I, guacamole, but I already put queso on, and that's a dollar add on. Yeah, yeah. And guacamole is another dollar fifty. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, but it, guacamole sure is tasty. So the question is in this scenario, in order to get the queso of the guacamole, you got to get rid of a filling. And that's the that will bring you below the eight dollar burrito bowl price. Um, because what I'm saying is is that we will, and I think the project management thinks this starting pitching is now the priority. If it means that they can't get Scherzer because they're two hundred fifty million dollars, but if they cannot, they can get rid of a guy who I don't know earned twenty three million dollars. Then just a total number I just came up with. Uh, that would allow them to have it. Of course, what I'm talking about, and this is one of our weaknesses, is in first base. First base, um, we have a player that, the streakiest player in, in our team, he below, plays below replacement level, Eric Hosmer. Like I, I, we've, I've, I've, I've talked a lot about Eric Hosmer. Uh, I do not hate the man himself, but he's just not a, he's not up to par with the offense of the Padres. Just, it just isn't, right? If he was a Chipotle filling, <laughs> he would be lettuce. Sometimes very good. Yes. Most of the time. But also the <laughs> first one you think to replace. Oh, I, I, I want to do a little, I'm going to do a sidebar, James, a little bit here. I've already done tons of sidebars right in this episode, but I do not hate Eric Cosmo. I Neither don't. do I. I, I, I. You and I have lots of fond memories on his clutch hitting, and it is true. He's gotten clutch hits in his time as a Padre. And the problem is, is that if you're relying on clutchness is your, is your defining offensive ability. I want you to get hits in the first, fourth and sixth inning too. I need you to get those hits. I need you to be, to not swing at pitches three. Like, I mean, people have brought up this, this, the, the NLDS at bat. NLDS game two last year, the Padres load the bases. Fernando Tatis Jr. and Manny Machado put together two amazing at bats. Tatis versus Kenley Jansen, Machado versus Joe Kelly. Incredible at bats. Loads the base for Eric Hosmer. It's 6 5. Game two of the NLDS. Eric Hosmer comes up and swings at three pitches below the strike zone, grounds out to second base. And you're yeah. like, that's not a good approach. That's, that's, that's so we have a guy now who's on our team, Adam Frazier, who's fast. Eric Hosmer is not. can get contact, and he bloops hits, tons of hits. Eric Hosmer does not do those things that it would make up for that kind of like bad flight discipline. He doesn't make up. He doesn't have that. And if our goal is to win a World Series as a team, there is a world which Eric Hosmer is a part of it. However, if there's a world in which you can get Max Scherzer and upgrade the first base position with someone who's above replacement level, who has good plate discipline and homers a lot, you're going to do that. Exactly. And I, this is not, I, I the, the quote unquote intangibles are real in baseball. People in the clubhouse really like Eric Hosmer. They do. He's a team leader. They like him a lot. He's done a lot for this team from that aspect. But he doesn't... 
a lineup with him on the bench is a better lineup with Jake Cronenworth at first. I agree. You have Adam Frazier at second, and you you know you have all sorts of options in the outfield. Um, and so all I have to say is first base is a, is a problem. Um, outfield is now becoming less of a problem with Fam Grisham and Frazier who can be to troll those spots. Um, with the infield being Machado, Tatis, Crone, and first could be Profar and Myers. I think Profar and Myers have better approaches than Hosmer right now. And I know I, Hosmer has had a great July, but he's streaky. And I think we've seen too much of him. Like, we've seen too much of him regress into a very bad player. And I think AJ Preller sees that. And, I, and it's like, if it's, if it's Max Scherzer or Eric Hosmer. You pick Scherzer all the way. And if it's Max Scherzer and Joey Gallo or Hosmer. Yeah, that's not even an argument. Right? I mean, I, I, I that's. GMs are people and they care about players' feelings. They do. It's by what people think. But when you propose that value proposition, when your billionaire owner is like, listen, you can have either Hosmer or Scherzer or Hosmer, Scherzer, or Hosmer or Scherzer and Gallo. What are you doing? I, I Sorry, Eric Hosmer. Enjoy Texas. You know, like. I agree. Just, <laughs> I agree. It's just it's, it's rough. It's, it's rough saying a guy that has given us so many memories, but like. That's that's where it's at. Where AJ Preller does not want to lead an organization that doesn't win multiple World Series. No, he wants multiple World Series before his time. His first contract is over in twenty twenty six. I know, and that that and and so do I. So that means every single bad position that's not contributing has to be better. And and as of right now, there's really only. There's two, actually, there's probably two bat positions that aren't contributing. First base and the bench. Yep. Every other position in the, in the infield and outfield can contribute. Or at least gives us competitive at bats. Yep. And for the Gallo rumor that keeps floating around, if we get Joey Gallo, I think automatically... You have Joey Gallo in the offense in the outfield because he's one of the best defensive outfielders. He's an amazing bat, and you platoon the outfield with Will Myers. Yeah, and Will Myers will just be on the bench for the rest of the year. And next year, when the DH happens, I think Will Myers is our DH. We're already if we get Gallo, we're predisposed to be a good Amer- American League type team. We already have. A good hitter. We don't have to go out for an, ex, an expensive DH. So we could probably not sign a DH and maybe afford to sign other pitchers. I, I mean, I think there's not a whole lot of signing happening next year. Our team is that stacked. Oh, like, I agree. Like if we get Gallo, he come. He's he's gone after 2022. Same with Adam Frazier. I mean, and we still have Trent Grisham, who you know, is a superstar. It it just has the capability of being a superstar. Jake Cronenworth. I don't know. I there's a there's a whole lot of goodness that doesn't we don't really need to sign much. But you have a guy like you have a rotating position of like of second and short and you know, Tatis would be a DH too, right? You'd have to give Ha Song some more at bats. Like you, it, we have such a it, once DH comes, it fixes a lot of our problems. Um but even if the DH was here, first base is still a problem. Exactly. It's still a big problem. Um, so that's, I mean, there's really only one talk that people have thought. I mean, Potters have been uh, been tacked on, have been attributed to Gallo for so long now. I said it's been for months of us being like, oh, we're gonna. AJ Prado loves Joey Gallo. AJ Prado helps sign Joey Gallo. Right. He's, he's a great always, name. I'm a, I'll, I'll just go out there and say. Yeah, it. He, he's all. Yeah, it's Joey. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, not my all Joey team though. Strangely enough. I know. I know. Not not that great. Joe DiMaggio, I'm sorry. It's better than Joe Gallo. <laughs> now. <but laughs> end of his career. Let's see what happens. So, Once he goes to Padre and has a few World Series under his belt. He's got to marry some supermodel and then have a, a modern Simon and Garfunkel write a song about him. 
Who's the modern Spider-Man and Garfunkel? I don't think there is. Jack White? No. No. Yeah. The Mumford and Sons? <laughs> the Mumford and Sons. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know a lot about music. It's <laughs> uh, funny. Uh, All right. Is there anything else that we want to talk about? I guess, I mean, there's been rumblings around um, bullpen and additional uh, bench bat to uh, the bench bat. The fourth bench bat is the fourth one bench bat. It's like so inconsequential. It, I don't think it's going to happen. But I think a bullpen could also happen. I think we could get, uh, I mean, good bullpen help is always helpful in the playoffs. You're not going to. Complain, like, no. Right. If we can get, if we can send another package of like, uh, Outside of top 100 prospects, the Cubs for Kimbrel. I don't think I, I think the Cubs are going to get crazy offers for him. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think we're going to get him. But if we could, I think we should. I, I am I, the, the the surprise so far in the trade sphere right now are the Blue Jays. Yeah. Why aren't they trading prospects for some of these starters? They should get. Relievers? They should get everybody. <laughs> they should get everybody. Yeah. <laughs> They need Kimbrell more than I think any team needs a closer. I wonder if Max vetoes Blue Jays, though, because of their... I mean, it's a pretty rough team to play on right now because you don't. You have to have three homes to play. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hope you're living in Florida, Buffalo, and Toronto. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Oh, boy. Um, I, we never really buttoned it up. What do you think about Joey Gallo? Do you... You don't like if we end up with Joey Gallo but no starter. I think we both agree. It's like, what are we doing? No, the, the number one priority, in my opinion, is a starter, a either an ace or two number three starters. What about like a combo of Mike, uh, Kyle Gibson plus Joey Gallo coming over from the Rangers? I have no problem with that. Yeah, I, don't, I have no problem with it either. Kyle Gibson is their ace. He would be our number three starter, but he is an ace. Yep. He has that kind of material. It's also going to be a weird landscape, too, because so many... There's not actually that many... Um, there's not actually that many great players. Cause a lot of them are... There's a lot of teams that are quasi-contending. Like And Trey Turner just got COVID. And he didn't just get COVID, but he got on the COVID IL. And he was a big trade piece, but now that's in limbo. Even Max Scherzer had a left... Tries that problem right now. And so you're just kind of like, there's not a lot of people that are like the people. And I think that might be one of the, I, I don't, I, why would you still not trade for Max, uh, for Trey Turner? He's going to be healthy in 10 days. No, yeah. If you're, if you're the Giants or Dodgers, like you need to just get Trey Turner. Especially, and the thing is like the people that write, that are going to be crazy in the next three days. Is everybody going coming out of the, if the Cubs are serious, everyone leaving the Cubs the next three days should be crazy. I agree. Um, yeah, so I guess that's all I have. I mean, we'll we'll do podcast reaction to when we get trades. I just asked AJ Preller. I know he's a big listener. He, he was our first subscriber, actually. I don't know if you know that, James. I did. Yes, he's. <laughs> I mean, we had him for dinner the other night. Yeah, that's right. And and he's so shy though. He doesn't want to come on the he's, podcast. He's a very shy guy. <laughs> um, I just asked AJ. I'm looking at the camera now. We don't have a camera, but if I did, I'd look at it. AJ, make your trades happen before 9 p.m. Okay. I do not want to record a midnight podcast. I'll do it. That's how committed I am to this podcast, but I prefer it was before 9 p.m. New listeners, Joey is a father of a young daughter that keeps that wakes up at what, 3 a.m. every morning? Now it's 5. Now it's 5, okay. Yeah. I do but, like my sleep. But though. she's teething, so it could well, be any I like time. my sleep, though. Yeah. James, that's it for Trade Rumors. Um, until. Till, till, an hour and, from now. Until an hour from now. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's check Twitter. Let's check Twitter. Um, I think Twitter is going to like call me and be like, hey, you can't press the refresh button so much. You can't drag the refresh so much. My servers are blowing up. Uh, yeah. It uh, does not look like... Um, yeah. It does not look like anything's happened. So, oh well. Until an hour from now when we get Max Scherzer and we do a reaction episode. That would be fantastic. 
So that leads to the next topic, which I am quite passionate about, as loyal listeners would know. Over this last weekend, the Padres played one of the toughest teams in baseball, known as the Doug Eddings. And for those of you that don't know who the heck I'm talking about, (laughs) Doug Eddings is an umpire, and he's trash. Not good. Not not good. Not good at all. It was one of the worst umpire-called games. And I've said this before. In this year, I've said that's the worst umpire I've seen all year. But no, this guy takes the cake. He wins the prize. He gets the gold star. A++++. This man was garbage, and he was vindictive. Towards the end of the game, even the the Marlins broadcasters were like, "I, it looks like he's doing this purposefully now against the Padres because they kept on complaining to him." He blew seventeen calls the entire game, which were bad strikes. Fifteen of them were against the Padres. Five of them were strike threes. He took the bat. Out of our Padres' hands, out of our out of our five Padres starting hitters, that's huge in a Major League Baseball game. One of them was Tatis. One of them was Myers. Two of them was Kim's, and the other Bam, one Bam got ejected on. And his. Bam got ejected on his. Yes, Bam like hey, I can't say what Bam said. Bam was not happy, and and I don't know if you know this, but Bam's unhappy. Probably should eject him as quickly as possible. <laughs> Fam will judo chop you in half. That man is a tough man. So Joey and I all year long have been working on a stat. Well, two stats. And we need all of our loyal listeners to share this and get it trending because it's something that has to happen. The first one is we're calling it the umpire error or UE. Every time an umpire blows a call, if it's a strike three or a ball four call, it's a UE. And I'm going to be posting um, the Baseball Savant search on this. What I mean, Baseball Savant is a website that will track these events for baseball. So you can actually, I'll have, I'll post these long links in the description and the app in the podcast description. So you actually, you can see what we're talking about. You can see, you can see every single UE in um, either via bad um, strike three or bad ball four, and you'll be able to wa- see those. What I'm talking about. So the UE, yeah. If a UE leads to a walk, that and if that walk scores, it's a UIR umpire induced runs, which means that run much like is is going to be an unearned run, so the pitcher does not get penalized for it. Right. He his ERA does not go up because this umpire is bad at his job. He gets paid $120,000 a year to know where a strike zone is, and he can't do it. I'm... Eh, anyways. I mean, the, this Doug Edding game was... Uh, I mean, it was unbelievable to watch. It, it, it really did feel like... It'd be one thing, too, if it was the same bad strike three call. Like, okay, he has a stupid wide zone to right-handers. Yeah, exactly. If, if if that's the thing, like if you have a wide strike zone and if it's consistent, nobody complains about that. Right. But it wasn't consistent at all. Uh, Skip Schumacher was called out of the, was thrown out of the game as well yeah. because Emilio Pagan threw a perfect strike on the corner of the strike zone on the edge of the strike zone, and it was a ball. Even though he has called balls strikes that were th- way outside, three inches outside. Or three is above it. Yeah, or exactly. Below it. Like it was bad all around. Yeah. Or down below. Right. And Skip Schumacher had it and came out and got ejected. It was one of the worst. And you could tell whenever you saw that beady little man's face, it's just he was evil. You could tell he had just had a he just had a little Napoleonic complex and he needs to be taken down a notch. And and, and the whole purpose of this stat is I think if the umpires want to become a part of the game, they get to be statted like the game. Yeah. If they want to continue to be bad at their job and be, you know, 
all intents and purposes jerks and have an attitude about it and then want and then revenge on the Padres because there's the thing the two blown calls he made against them the Marlins were in the first two innings and then the rest of the bad calls were all against the Padres and that's when the Padres started complaining and it's just kept on getting worse and worse and worse so and the other stat is if you're a hitter and you get struck out because the ball's a foot off the plate or right. At your ankles, that's what happened to Will Myers. The ball was literally almost hit him in the ankle, and he just saw like, and he was called out. Like, what? What was that all about? That does not go against your batting average. That's like a walk. It's it, it's a wash. It doesn't. So it doesn't affect. If an umpire screws up, it does not affect the pitcher stats or the hitter stats. So to to to, to kind of um, summarize. Umpire error happens when a bad strike three call happens. It basically, it wasn't a strike three, and it calls strike three. And or it's also a um, uh, a ball four on a strike pitch. Basically. Correct. That's an umpire error. An umpire-induced run would be if any of those said UEs come in to score. And as a hitter, if someone has an umpire and do umpire error, it is not attacked. It's not attached to your batting average. Correct. I'm going to be attaching stuff for the UE, UIR stuff, and the and we haven't come with a fun little thing for the umpire adjusted batting average, umpire adjusted bat UABA. That doesn't sound good. It's, we'll figure it out. Well, no, the thing is, it's it's just like any um any run score you can see. Well, yeah, yeah okay. called out on you um umpire out U UO. Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll post the I'll, I mean, like I said, I, I have the searches for the umpire error on Baseball Savant, and, and I'll just share them. You guys can look at what I'm talking about, and just click the little video icon next to it, and you can see. I mean, it's funny watching these umpire error videos because they're always the same. Announcers the announcers are like, "That wasn't a strike. That was a ball. Oh, that's a strike." And like, it's, it's always the same and, response. And also, <laughs> we should post the Mark Grant breakdown. Yeah, I'll, and, I'll link that. I'll link that as well. Yeah, and it was he. Doug Eddings did such a bad job. And I've said this before. If I n- leave the game knowing the home plate umpire's name, yeah. it's a bad umpire's job. Yep. I agree. Don Arcillo and Mud Grant made Doug Eddings the player of the game. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. So did you did you see during that game, Doug Eddings was the third to- um, highest topic on Twitter? Yeah, it was... On sports Twitter, yeah, sports like trending Twitter, it was, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's bad. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it was, he, he was, it was, it was terrible. I it mean, was I, absolutely I went, terrible. Yeah, I've had, I had people I know like who do not follow baseball ask me about it. <laughs> me too. Like, I've had people text me like, "Do you still do that Padrick podcast? Do you do you talk? You gonna talk about the umpire? So uh, well. Yeah, we're gonna talk about it. it. Is it was one of the worst examples I've ever seen, and I think. We as sports fans need to have this happen. And if they do not get an electronic strike zone soon in Major League Baseball, if we can push this to a point where Major League Baseball, it's a stat Major League Baseball recognizes, and maybe the official scorer will throw it up there, if the umpires want to be kept in as a relevant piece of this sport, because the behind the home plate umpire is in a relevant piece at this point. Electronics can do it all. They have to be held accountable. We can see this is the um, and then we can even have averages. This is the umpire's average. This is how many UEs he has this year. <laughs> if they want to be the third team on the on the field, yeah. they get scored like the third team on the field. And that is, I think, our goal, brothers Padre fans, baseball fans, Americans and Patriots. We must make this happen. <laughs> We're on Spotify. We're on Apple Podcast. Run over. We're on everything. We're on YouTube. Thank you for liking us. Thank you for subscribing to us. James, until next time, go Padres. Go Padres. <laughs> and there it is. Ho ho, doctor. You can hang a star on that, baby. The Mumford and Sons? <laughs> the Mumford and Sons. <laughs> the, the. <laughs>